everybody, Card Dreamer again, coming at you on behalf of Ash, the D-Class Hero. What's that D stand for? Dull. If you've seen the videos on this channel, you know I make the best ones. Today I'm going to do a review of something that is was a surprisingly... I don't want to say a full-on hidden gem, but it definitely is a nice sparkle within uh, the flow of... In, catalog of games that are available on the Xbox One. And, uh, it is available on PlayStation 4 as well. And the game is called Mamongo Pinball Adventures. Now this is a game I got strictly because it was easy achievements and it was on sale for $3.30. That was really my driving focus to buy it. Just, I, because I'm an achievement hunter, junkie, I just bought it for that reason. I wasn't looking for anything great. But it did pique a little bit of interest to me because it reminded me uh, genre-wise or category-wise of a game I played on the original Nintendo that was a pinball adventure as well. You went around killing knights and skeletons and such through this grand story, and I was thinking this would be something similar. And I tried this with Ash uh, the other night, and we instantly were blown away because we didn't have any expectations. It's not that this was an amazing, awesome game, but it was definitely fun and intriguing and lent itself to a good time for what it was. And you, you can't ask for more than that, really. You can't. So immediately, I have to say I love the graphics. I love the art style. It's cute. Um, but it's fun, it's bright, it's vibrant, colorful. Love it. The music, which I have turned off right now. Go down the options. You can see you have uh, sound effects. You can turn off music. And you, or you can watch some uh, opening cinematics. I love the music because it's simple, it's calming, it's soothing. And it never gets boring, but it never gets too heavy or overpowering. You can also see there's an online... Uh, global leaderboard if you uh, want to prefer to see where you stand in the overall game, if you want to look it for friends, whatever. And uh, it's nothing complex. I, I'm not, not doing too bad. Not the worst, not the best. But it, it's just a really, it was a really neat game. We were laughing at certain things and just having a ball, making jokes, which unfortunately some of which we can't use on this channel. But there are nine story levels, which are indicated by the blue, and there's, I believe, three um, bonus levels that are indicated by green. And, and you can always watch the rewatch the opening intro if you'd like. And uh, each level, each story level, has three stars and five challenges you can do. Now, the stars are three stars you can do on the bonus levels, but they are not required for any achievement. They're just for fun kookiness. And uh, we'll go back to the intro, give that a view. Low times are great. They're never long, so that's always a plus for me. I love that part of the cinematic. No dialogue or words was needed to tell that story. It was just, and it was really nice art. And this is the part that made me and Ash laugh. We were not expecting Japanese voice work. It was great. It just added a goofy quirkiness to the game that it, it works for the game. It, all the whole story is written in English. The dialogue, everything's narrated in or played in English. But all the voice acting was Japanese. And it, it was just great. It was just not what we expected. <laughs> it was just fun.
So I'll do the first level just so you guys can see a little taste of what it is. I don't want to give away what little to the story that they do do. Um, I've already completed all the challenges. And each level, there are things that we get mixed up in every level. Um, this is just a tutorial level. It's going to tell you, it's basically just teaching you how to use the controls. There's three buttons you're only ever going to use. Left joystick, you pull down to shoot the mongo slash the pinball to the playing field. And then you can, it says, like you saw by the display, left and right bumpers for the flippers. But you can also use the triggers, they do the same thing, and that's it. Levels can vary in some of the game app gameplay as far as uh, what you gotta do. There's a couple of flying sections since he is a flying squirrel. And again, you're just gonna use the left and right triggers or bumpers to move them left and right. They're not oversensitive, which is always a good thing. It, it worked really well. And there's sometimes um, things you can do to uncover little hidden paths or areas to a level to get you more points or so forth as well. And there's sometimes challenges that would be related to that. As you can see, you are scored on three things. You, um, how many points you've managed to gather throughout the level, your, uh, how fast you complete the level, and how much health you have remaining at the end of the level. You have three hearts. You lose them basically by if you miss them with the flippers and he goes down the middle, or later in the levels when there are enemies if you get hurt. Now, I do want to take the time to show you guys a challenge. Um, now, I, I got most completed, as you can see, but... Alright, so, alright, so I gotta finish this level in 150 seconds. And I've tried a few times. I can't do this. Um, some of it's just going to take some free, uh, repeated practice. But there's not much, too much more to say. This will give you an idea of some uh, additional gameplay mechanics that are going to come into play. Now he's more as the only one who's able to break the rock at the beginning of this uh, level. Obviously, a Mako would be free. is a health uh, 
refill, unfortunately. But unfortunately, you can't use it on the mole rat because you don't really use them for any other levels. As you can see, I'm definitely going to fail. I was never good at aiming a pinball in a pinball game. I'm continuing on instead of ending the level. Basically, I just wanted to show you guys this is how close I was to the end. Like, that's the end right there. And it's not that difficult to get straight up there. Because I say that now, watch me have trouble. Alright, so it's more difficult than it looks, apparently. And that's it. So... As you can see, I really did make the... I didn't make the challenge, but... That's pretty much it to the game. The, ch the bonus ones are kind of pretty fun, too. Um, and they're just silly, quirky levels. They're not meant for anything more than that. Alright, so I'll give you guys an idea what this bonus level looks like. And again, they're just for fun. You can see you're playing as one of uh, the side characters from the story. You're not playing as Momongo. Uh, I know in the second bonus one you play as the Mole Rat. I don't know about the third one. I haven't played it yet. And it's just silly fun. I mean, you're playing as the panda flying through the sky eating food. I mean, it's just silly fun. And I'm sure there's something to say about it. The whole goal is just to see how far you can get, how many points you can get, uh, before you end up, at, before you accidentally hit a cloud and fall. And that's really the whole gist in game of a Mongo. It's, it's just a lot of, it's just silly fun that you can do for the, with the family. Or, like I said, with me and Ash, we, uh, <laughs> we, have, we had fun with it, but it wasn't a, definitely wasn't family jokes. And, oh, see, and as you see, I, that's what happens when you hit a cloud. But that's the entire game, folks. Nothing too complex, just a fun, relaxing game, casual, that you can complete if you're an achievement um, person. And if not, you can still have fun with it. In the, until next time, I'm Car Dreamer on behalf of Ash, the D-Class Hero. Like and subscribe.